Carolyn Fisher here's our Hepid and Carolyn Toss podcast. So this question is for both you, Shopee, and for you, Zawi. And um, the thing about this film, it is it's called Mr. Malcolm's List, and it's about this list that Jeremy has for the the perfect wife that he's looking for. But the thing is, is that Selena doesn't have a list, but she knows exactly what she wants in a partner. So I want both of you to talk a bit about how Selena not being bound down by a list and not being caught up with the idea of an ideal husband or ideal partner actually allows them both to progress as relate uh, in a relationship, but also as individual characters. So um, we can begin with you, Zawi. Hi, Carolyn, nice to meet you. Um, and just so great to be part of this, uh, this round table discussion. I've been a, a real fan of the ones that you've done previously. And so thank you for inviting us to to the table. Um, I think that's such a good question. Uh, a scene that I was really happy made it into the film was the establishing scene of the movie, which is a, a, a flashback to a young Julia, my character, and a young Selena making a vow that despite their um, difference in social standing, that they would remain connected in their bid for uh, finding a love match in, in, in society later on, rather than a match for just, um, you know, the domestic and, and financial gain as, as was the case at the time. And I feel, I feel like that's a really wonderful message. And you're so right. Selena doesn't have something written down necessarily, but she does stick to the courage of that conviction that she had as a girl and, um, Perhaps another relatable quality to this film is how we how we can self abandon with age and how we can become very um, pressurized by society and its expectations and lose sight of that pure desire uh, and that pure objective that we had at a time when we weren't under uh, those kind of constraints. So I I I. I love that question because it really kind of makes me think about um, how she's managed to keep that fire alive inside of her. But Jeremy has that fire too. You know, he's just, he's just drunk with Kool-Aid a bit. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good interpretation. He's drunk the Regency Kool-Aid. You're looking (laughs) for too much. (laughs) Yeah, Carolyn, can I have the question again, please? Sometimes I just I just love listening to Zoe <laughs> speak, and I just like <laughs> no, no, <laughs> completely so lose question. everything else. No, isn't he yeah, clever sure, leading man? Question. I mean, for God's sake, <laughs> intelligent, wise. Yeah, no, sure. So my question was how um, it's interesting that um, the film is about his list, about Jeremy's list, but the, it kind of like also kind of shows that Selena not being bound down by her own list and her own mm-hmm. ideas. She she wasn't even looking for a partner. Actually, helps him to realize that he was being too entrenched in his own idea of ideal mm-hmm. personal mate. So for um, so for Jeremy, what do you think it was about her that made him realize, you know what, these lists aren't actually good when it comes to looking for a partner? He limits himself with a list. Um, he then cannot see anything beyond this ecosystem he's created for himself. And she comes and says that the world is so much bigger than these 10 points. Like your mind can be so much bigger than these 10 points and to be organic to be surprised to let things happen is like that's that's the spice of life you know if you say i i only ever w- want to eat fish and chips for dinner you write that down then like what is your experience of life she she completely shakes him up mm-hmm. and uh offers him something that he couldn't imagine for himself. Similar in a way that Emma Holly Jones offered something to me that I couldn't imagine for myself in the role. Selena does the same with Malcolm. It's a parallel that I hadn't seen yet. So thank you for enlightening me to that. Thank you, I love the film, thank you.